Imagine this, you're standing at the base of a mountain, staring up at the daunting peak above. The path ahead is steep, rocky and treacherous. You're feeling overwhelmed, uncertain if you have what it takes to reach the summit. But what if I told you that the key to conquering that mountain lies not in your physical strength, but in your mindset? This is where the ancient wisdom of Stoicism comes in. Picture a philosopher from ancient Greece or Rome, standing tall in the face of adversity, a beacon of calm in a chaotic world. The Stoics understood that true power lies in our ability to control our thoughts, emotions and actions, even when the world around us is turbulent. In this video, we'll embark on a journey through the core principles of Stoicism, uncovering the secrets that have helped individuals thrive under pressure for centuries. We'll explore how to focus on what you can control, align your actions with your values, find opportunity in adversity, cultivate self-awareness, practice acceptance and serve others. Now, let's begin our journey into the heart of Stoicism and discover the keys to doing your best, even in the face of life's toughest challenges. 1. Focus on what you can control. Picture this. You're stuck in traffic, late for an important meeting. The cars ahead of you aren't moving and you can feel your stress levels rising. Your mind starts racing, thinking about all the ways this could negatively impact your day. Sound familiar? Now, imagine a different scenario. You're in that same traffic jam, but instead of getting worked up, you take a deep breath and remind yourself, I can't control the traffic, but I can control my response to it. This simple shift in perspective is the essence of the Stoic principle of focusing on what you can control. The Stoics understood that life is full of variables beyond our control. The actions of others, natural disasters, even the thoughts that pop into our heads. They called these things externals, but they also recognized that we have complete control over our own choices, judgments and responses, what they called internals. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and philosopher, summed it up perfectly in his personal journal, Meditations. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. So how can we apply this wisdom to our modern lives? Let's break it down with a relatable example. Imagine you're working on a project with a tight deadline. Your boss is piling on the pressure and your co-worker keeps missing milestones. It's easy to get caught up in frustration and blame, but a stoic approach would encourage you to focus on what's within your control. You can't control your boss's expectations or your co-worker's actions, but you can control your own effort, your communication and your attitude. By putting your energy into these areas, you'll be more productive and less stressed. This principle applies to every area of life. Stuck in a difficult relationship? Focus on being the best partner you can be. Struggling with a health issue? Focus on making healthy choices and following your treatment plan. Worried about the state of the world? Focus on making a positive impact in your community. But focusing on what you can control isn't always easy. It takes practice and self-awareness. One helpful tool is the stoic exercise of premeditatio malorum or premeditation of evils. This involves mentally rehearsing potential challenges and visualizing yourself responding with clarity and resilience. For example, before a big presentation, you might imagine technical difficulties or tough questions from the audience. By envisioning these scenarios in advance and planning your response, you'll be better prepared to handle them if they arise. Another key strategy is reframing obstacles as opportunities. When faced with a challenge, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? By shifting your perspective, you can transform setbacks into stepping stones. Remember, focusing on what you can control is a continuous practice. 
There will be times when you slip into old patterns of worry or blame, but by catching yourself and gently redirecting your focus, you can cultivate a sense of empowerment and resilience. As Epictetus, one of the most famous Stoic teachers, put it, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. By mastering your reactions, you become the captain of your own ship, navigating life's storms with grace and determination. So the next time you find yourself getting caught up in external chaos, take a step back and ask yourself, what can I control in this situation? Focus your energy there and watch how your world starts to shift. But this is just the beginning. In the next section, we'll explore how aligning your actions with your values can take your personal power to the next level. Get ready to dive deeper into the heart of Stoicism and unlock your full potential. Section 2. Take action in alignment with your values. Have you ever found yourself at a crossroads, torn between what feels easy and what feels right? Maybe it's a choice between speaking up against injustice or staying silent to avoid conflict. Or perhaps it's a decision between taking a lucrative job offer or pursuing a passion project with less certain outcomes. In moments like these, the Stoics would encourage us to let our values be our guide. They believed that living in accordance with virtue was the key to a fulfilling life. But what does that mean in practice? Imagine a modern-day Stoic, let's call her Sophie. Sophie is a young entrepreneur faced with a difficult decision. She's been offered a partnership in a successful company, but she knows their business practices don't align with her environmental values. Sophie remembers the words of Seneca, who said, If one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favorable. She realizes that without a clear sense of her values, she'll be blown off course by the winds of opportunity and opinion. So Sophie takes some time to reflect on what truly matters to her. She journaled about her core beliefs and the kind of impact she wants to have on the world. She realizes that her commitment to sustainability is non-negotiable. With this clarity, Sophie's decision becomes easier. She turns down the partnership and instead starts her own company focused on eco-friendly products. It's a risk, but it's one that aligns with her deepest values. This is what it means to take action in alignment with your values. It's about having the courage to live your principles, even when it's hard. It's about being willing to say no to what doesn't serve your higher purpose, so you can say yes to what does. Of course, living according to your values isn't always a clear-cut choice between right and wrong. Often, it involves navigating complex situations and balancing competing priorities. That's where stoic practices like journaling and self-reflection come in. By regularly examining our thoughts and actions, we can get clearer on what we stand for and how well we're living up to it. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, models this kind of honest self-assessment. He writes, When you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly. They are like this because they can't tell good from evil. By acknowledging the challenges he's likely to face, Marcus Aurelius is preparing himself to respond with patience, kindness, and integrity, even when others don't. He's reminding himself to act in alignment with his values, no matter what the day brings. Epictetus takes this idea a step further, arguing that our actions are the truest expression of our philosophy. He says, don't just say you have read books, show that through them you have learned to think better, to be a more discriminating and reflective person. In other words, it's not enough to just know what our values are. We have to embody them through our choices and behaviors. We have to walk the talk. And here's the thing. When we consistently act in alignment with our values, we create a kind of inner harmony that is deeply fulfilling. We may face external challenges and setbacks, 
but we have the satisfaction of knowing we're being true to ourselves. So take a moment now to consider what are the core values that guide your life? How can you start bringing your actions into greater alignment with those values starting today? Remember, living with integrity isn't about being perfect. It's about being committed to the ongoing practice of self-reflection and self-improvement. It's about having the courage to stand for something, even when it's hard. In the next section, we'll explore how this commitment to virtue can transform even the greatest obstacles into opportunities for growth and resilience. Get ready to discover the hidden power of adversity. 3. Find opportunity in adversity. Picture the scene. It's 1914 and Ernest Shackleton's ship, the Endurance, is trapped in pack ice in the Antarctic. The crew's goal of crossing the continent on foot has been thwarted. They're stranded in one of the harshest environments on Earth, facing the prospect of starvation, frostbite and almost certain death. What would you do in a situation like this? Most of us would probably give in to despair. But Shackleton and his crew did something remarkable. They found opportunity in their adversity. Over the next two years, the men worked together to survive. They hunted seals and penguins for food. They salvaged timber from the destroyed ship to build shelters and boats. And when the ice finally broke up, Shackleton led a daring 800-mile journey in a small lifeboat to find help. Against all odds, every single crew member survived. And they returned home, not broken by their hardships, but transformed by them with stories of courage, resilience, and the unbreakable power of the human spirit. This is the essence of the Stoic principle of finding opportunity in adversity. The Stoics recognize that challenges and setbacks are inevitable parts of life. But they also believed that these difficulties carry with them the seeds of growth and wisdom. Seneca put it this way, difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. Just as physical exercise tears down our muscles so they can rebuild stronger, the Stoics saw adversity as a kind of mental exercise, a way to develop our character and inner strength. Epictetus took this idea even further, declaring, what really frightens and dismays us is not external events themselves, but the way in which we think about them. It is not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of their significance. In other words, it's not what happens to us that matters most, but how we choose to respond to it. We can't always control our circumstances, but we can always control our mindset. This is a profoundly empowering idea. It means that even in the darkest of times, we have the power to find meaning, purpose and growth. We can use our challenges as catalysts for transformation. Think about a difficult experience you've faced in your own life. Maybe it was a job loss, a health crisis, or the end of a relationship. In the moment, it probably felt devastating. But looking back, can you see ways in which that experience made you stronger, wiser, or more compassionate? This isn't to minimize the pain of hardship. The Stoics weren't advocating for a relentless positivity that denies the reality of suffering. Rather, they were encouraging a shift in perspective, a willingness to look for the opportunity in the obstacle. Marcus Aurelius embodied this approach in his leadership of Rome. As emperor, he faced numerous crises, wars, plagues, famines and political turmoil. But in each challenge, he sought to find the lesson and the opportunity for virtue. In his meditations, he writes, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. In other words, the very things that seem to block our path can become the path if we approach them with the right mindset. So the next time you face a setback, try asking yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I use this experience to become a better version of myself? What action can I take, even if it's just a small step forward? Remember, 
growth often happens in the place of discomfort. It's in pushing against our limits that we expand them, and it's in rising to meet our challenges that we discover just how capable and resilient we truly are. By finding opportunity in adversity, we open ourselves up to a life of continuous learning, self-discovery and personal evolution. We become not just survivors, but thrivers. People who can weather any storm and emerge stronger on the other side. But to truly make the most of life's challenges, we need to develop a keen understanding of ourselves and the world around us. That's where the next Stoic principle comes in cultivating self-awareness and objectivity. Get ready to explore the transformative power of turning inward. 4. Cultivate self-awareness and objectivity. Imagine you're at a party and someone makes a comment that pushes your buttons. Maybe they criticize your work or make a joke at your expense. Before you know it, you're getting defensive, your face is flushed and you're ready to lash out. Now freeze that frame. If you could press pause on this moment and step outside yourself, what would you see? You might notice your clenched jaw, your racing heart, the anger clouding your thoughts. You might see how your reaction is more about your own insecurities than the actual comment. This ability to observe ourselves with clarity and objectivity is what the Stoics called the examined life and they believed it was essential for personal growth and emotional mastery. Epictetus said, it is impossible for a man to begin to learn what he thinks he already knows. In other words, if we assume we have it all figured out, we close ourselves off to new insights and perspectives. The Stoics encouraged a practice of constant self-reflection, not in a navel-gazing, self-indulgent way, but in a spirit of honest self-assessment and continuous improvement. They saw self-awareness not as an end in itself, but as a means to living more wisely and virtuously. So how can we cultivate this kind of self-awareness? One powerful tool is journaling. Marcus Aurelius famously kept a personal journal, which became the book we know today as Meditations. In it, he reflects on his own thoughts, actions and emotions with a level of candor and insight that's still striking nearly 2,000 years later. You don't have to be an emperor to benefit from this practice. Try setting aside a few minutes each day to write about your experiences. What challenges did you face? How did you respond? What patterns do you notice in your thoughts and behaviors? The key is to approach this process with a spirit of curiosity and non-judgment. You're not trying to beat yourself up or wallow in regret. You're simply trying to understand yourself more deeply so you can make more conscious choices moving forward. Another stoic practice for cultivating objectivity is called the view from above. The idea is to imagine yourself zooming out from your current situation as if you're looking down on it from a great height. From this vantage point, the petty frustrations and daily dramas of life tend to lose their grip. You start to see the bigger picture, the interconnectedness of all things, the impermanence of even the greatest triumphs and tragedies. Marcus Aurelius used this technique to keep a sense of perspective in the midst of his many responsibilities and challenges. He writes, you can get away from it any time you like, by going within. Nowhere you can go is more peaceful, more free of interruptions than your own soul. This isn't about escapism or denial. It's about finding a place of inner stability and clarity, even in the midst of life's storms. It's about learning to respond rather than react, to choose our thoughts and actions deliberately rather than being driven by impulse or emotion. And as we develop this capacity for self-awareness and objectivity, we naturally start to experience life with greater equanimity and resilience. We become less rattled by the ups and downs of fortune, less attached to specific outcomes, more grounded in our own inner wisdom. 
Of course, cultivating self-awareness is a lifelong journey. There will always be new layers to uncover, new blind spots to illuminate. But by committing to this practice, we open ourselves up to a life of continuous growth, self-discovery and expanding perspective. And from this place of greater self-understanding, we can start to engage with the world in a more authentic, compassionate and purposeful way. We can start to let go of what's not serving us and focus on what truly matters. Which brings us to the next Stoic principle, practicing acceptance and non-attachment. Get ready to explore how letting go can paradoxically open us up to a life of greater freedom and fulfillment. 5. Practice Acceptance and Non-Attachment Picture a scene from the movie Forrest Gump. Forrest is sitting on a bench, reflecting on the twists and turns of his life. He says, My mama always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. This simple statement captures a profound truth about the nature of existence. Life is inherently uncertain. No matter how carefully we plan or how hard we work, there will always be factors beyond our control. The actions of others, the whims of chance, the inescapable realities of change and mortality. For many of us, this uncertainty is a source of great anxiety. We cling to our desires and expectations, hoping to impose some sense of order and predictability on the chaos of life. But the tighter we grip, the more we suffer. The Stoics understood this dilemma deeply. They recognized that much of our unhappiness comes not from external events themselves, but from our resistance to them. We struggle against what is, wishing things were different. Epictetus put it this way, Don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will, then your life will flow well. This isn't a call for passive resignation. The Stoics believed in taking action, in working to make the world a better place, but they also recognized the wisdom of accepting what is beyond our control. This is where the practice of non-attachment comes in. Non-attachment doesn't mean not caring. It means caring deeply, but holding our desires and outcomes loosely. It means engaging fully with life, while also recognizing the impermanence of all things. Think about a time when you wanted something desperately, a job, a relationship, a particular outcome. The more attached you were to that desire, the more you likely suffered. The fear of not getting what you wanted, or the pain of losing what you had, probably consumed a great deal of your mental and emotional energy. Now imagine approaching that same situation with a spirit of non-attachment. You still care, you still put in your best effort, but you also recognize that the outcome is ultimately beyond your control. You find a way to be at peace with whatever happens. This is the essence of the Stoic principle of Amor Fati, the love of fate. It's not about blindly accepting everything that happens to us, it's about finding a way to say yes to life in all its complexity and uncertainty. Marcus Aurelius expressed this beautifully in his meditations. Accept the things to which fate binds you and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. Practicing non-attachment doesn't make us immune to pain or disappointment, but it does give us a kind of inner freedom when we're not constantly fighting against reality, we open ourselves up to a deeper sense of peace and equanimity. And paradoxically, when we let go of our attachment to specific outcomes, we often find that we're more effective in achieving our goals. We're able to respond to challenges with greater flexibility and resilience. We're less likely to get derailed by setbacks or discouraged by failures. So how can we start cultivating non-attachment in our own lives? One powerful practice is gratitude. When we take time to appreciate what we have, rather than fixating on what we lack, we naturally start to loosen our grip on our desires. We can also practice reframing our perceptions of events. 
when something doesn't go our way, instead of getting caught up in disappointment or self-pity, we can look for the opportunity or lesson. We can ask ourselves, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? Ultimately, practicing non-attachment is about learning to dance with the unpredictability of life. It's about finding a way to be at peace with change, to let go of control, to trust in the unfolding of our unique journey. And as we cultivate this spirit of acceptance and flexibility, we naturally start to find more opportunities to connect with others, to offer our gifts in service of something greater than ourselves. That brings us to the final Stoic principle we'll be exploring today, serving and connecting with others. Get ready to discover how contributing to the greater good can give our lives a profound sense of meaning and fulfillment. 6. Serve and connect with others. There's a famous saying that goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The Stoics understood this wisdom deeply. They recognized that we are all part of a larger whole, a global community of fellow humans, inextricably connected in our shared journey through life. Marcus Aurelius expressed this beautifully in his Meditations. What injures the hive injures the bee. In other words, what harms the community harms the individual, and conversely, what benefits the community benefits us all. The Stoics believe that we each have a unique role to play in this interconnected web of life. We all have gifts to offer, contributions to make, and it's in giving of ourselves in service to others that we find our deepest sense of purpose and fulfillment. Seneca put it this way, no one can live happily who has regard to himself alone and transforms everything into a question of his own utility. You must live for your neighbor if you would live for yourself. This isn't about self-sacrifice or martyrdom. It's about recognizing that our own well-being is intrinsically linked to the well-being of those around us. It's about finding ways to align our own passions and talents with the needs of the world. Think about the times in your life when you felt most alive, most fulfilled. Chances are, those were moments when you were contributing to something bigger than yourself, whether it was helping a friend in need, volunteering for a cause you believe in, or creating something of value for others. That's because we're hardwired for connection and contribution. Numerous studies studies have shown that people who engage in acts of kindness and generosity experience greater levels of happiness, health, and even longevity. Serving others gives our lives a sense of meaning and purpose that goes beyond our own narrow self-interest. But how can we start incorporating this principle into our own lives? It can be as simple as making a commitment to perform one small act of kindness each day. Maybe it's offering a sincere compliment to a colleague, helping an elderly neighbor with their groceries, or donating to a charity you believe in. As we start to make service a regular practice, we may find ourselves naturally drawn to larger opportunities to contribute. Maybe we discover a cause that ignites our passion and we start volunteering our time and skills. Or maybe we find ways to align our career with our values so that our daily work feels like an expression of our deepest purpose. The key is to approach service not as a burden or obligation, but as an opportunity, a chance to connect with others, to make a difference, to find fulfillment by giving of ourselves. And as we do so, we may start to notice a profound shift in our relationships and our experience of life. When we're focused on contributing to others, our own problems and anxieties tend to lose their grip. We find ourselves part of a larger story, a shared human struggle and journey. The Stoics believed that we are all part of a universal community, a cosmopolis that transcends national, cultural and social boundaries. By acting with kindness and compassion towards all people, we affirm our fundamental interconnectedness. Marcus Aurelius put it this way, 
constantly regard the universe as one living being, having one substance and one soul, and how all things act with one movement, and how all things are the cooperating causes of all things which exist. Observe too, the continuous spinning of the thread and the structure of the web. When we serve and connect with others, we tap into this web of interdependence. We recognize that our actions, no matter how small, have a ripple effect on the world around us. And we find a sense of belonging and purpose that comes from being part of something greater than ourselves. So as we come to the end of our exploration of Stoic principles, I invite you to reflect on how you can start incorporating service and connection into your own life. How can you use your unique gifts and passions to make a difference in the world, to contribute to the greater good? Remember, this isn't about grand gestures or heroic sacrifices. It's about finding small daily ways to show up for others, to offer your presence and your heart. It's about recognizing that we are all in this together and that our own fulfillment is deeply entwined with the well-being of all. As Epictetus said, what should we do then? Make the best use of what is in our power and treat the rest in accordance with its nature. Let us take this wisdom to heart and strive to live each day with purpose, compassion and a commitment to serving the greater good. And as we do so, we may just find that the key to our own happiness and fulfillment lies not in what we acquire or achieve for ourselves, but in what we give and contribute to others. That in losing ourselves in service, we find our truest and most authentic selves. So go forth with an open heart and a generous spirit. Embrace the opportunities to connect and contribute that life brings your way. And trust that in serving others, you are also serving the highest and best in yourself. This brings us to the end of our journey through the 12 Stoic Principles for doing your best. I hope these teachings have resonated with you and have offered some practical wisdom for navigating life's challenges with grace, resilience and purpose. Remember, Stoicism isn't just a set of abstract ideas. It's a lived philosophy, a daily practice of aligning our thoughts, actions and values. It's a continuous process of self-reflection, growth and service. So keep these principles close to your heart, refer back to them often, and most importantly, strive to embody them in your daily life, for it is in the living that these teachings truly come alive and transform us. Thank you for joining me on this journey. It's been an honor to explore these timeless wisdom with you. May they guide and inspire you on your path to a life of purpose, resilience and fulfillment. Until next time, keep shining your light and doing your best. The world needs what you have to offer. Stay curious, stay compassionate and stay committed to your own growth and service. And always remember, you have the power within you to face any challenge, to find opportunity in any adversity and to make a difference in the world, one small act at a time. Keep shining bright, my friends. The world is better for your presence in it.